Um, yeah, as you can probably guess, it's, it's not been the greatest, but we need to pick ourselves back up again. Um, got a big game tomorrow, and we need to, you know, bounce back and get straight back into it. Um, yeah, it's been a disappointing start to the season, and we're just hoping that we can get back on track and get back into it. Yeah, it's been a disappointing start to the season, and we're just hoping that we can get back on track and get back into it. Yeah, it's been a disappointing start to the season, and we're just hoping that we can get back on track and get back into it. Yeah, it's been a disappointing start to the season, and we're just hoping that we can get back on track and get back into it. Yeah, it's been a disappointing start to the season, and we're just hoping that we can get back on track and get back into it. Yeah, it's been a disappointing start to the season, and we're just hoping that we can get back on track and get back into it. Yeah, it's been a disappointing start to the season, and we're just hoping that we can get back on track and get back into it. Um, you know, it just wasn't to be this year. You know, it's it's difficult to take, not just for them but for us as well. You know, we put so much into pre-season and stuff, and you know, sometimes sometimes you need that little bit of luck to go with you. Um, luck wasn't with us on a night, but you know, we pick ourselves up and we go again. So the last two seasons, you felt that disappointment. What, what is it that you need to to get over that line and to make that step into the group stage? What is it the club's missing with a player this closeness? Um. No, I think if you look after, if you look at the first leg, I think it was a, a good result away from home. Scoring a big goal, you think right, okay, second leg, you know, try and play on the front foot again as we did over there. Um, but the first half we didn't show up. Um, but if you look at the second half compared to the first half, it was night and day. Um, and if I approached the, the first half the way we did the second half, we would have had no problems. You know, but football is a ninety minute game, um, and you can't you, you can't just turn up for one half. You need to turn up for both. But how big Champions League football is for this club as a player? How easy or difficult is it? to put that result and what it means to the back of your mind and concentrate on the game? <laughs> a club like this, you've got to put, put it to the back of your mind because, you know, we've got a, a cup, cup game tomorrow um, and ultimately we want to go and win that. So, you know, the defensive, the trophy starts now. Um, Dunfermline will, will come and make it difficult for us. You know, they'll try and sit in and play on the counter-attack, but it's about what we do and, you know, we need to our, take our frustration out on them. Do you still see Leeds, still see Celtic as a, a Champions League club, or is it a case now for any Scottish club that when they reach the Champions League, you're almost punching above your weight? No, I think it keeps getting told, talked about that. You know, it gets harder every year, and people look at you know the coefficient numbers and their their rankings and stuff in in UEFA. But you know, to us, we knew how how difficult a tie it was. Um, you know, they're, they're no mugs. They they won the the league. But you know, again, it wasn't it wasn't to be every year this year again. So we pick ourselves up and move on. You mentioned there that it, it just didn't happen in the first half. Have you thought about maybe why that didn't happen? Nah, I mean, you know, sometimes these things go for you, sometimes they don't. You know, we didn't start really well on, on Saturday as well against Motherwell. You know, but we managed to bounce back again. The second half performance was brilliant, and um, but we need to start turning, you know, the second forty-five minute performances into ninety minutes. This isn't obviously the first time we've still have missed out on the group stages. We've been here quite a while now. Do you feel that the qualification process, although it's you know it's obviously there's less teams such as Celtic can get through, do you think the qual of the opponents that you faced in the qualification is now better than it was maybe when you came to the club? Um, yeah, I mean, you, you look at, we, we've played, you know, a number of teams over the, the, the seasons that I've been here. Um, they're all established teams in Europe, regardless if it's Europa League or, or Champions League, um, in a qualifying stage. So, like I say, there's no, there's no easy ties in Europe. It, it, it's difficult to get through. You know, it doesn't help that we need to play, you know, four four sets of games to, to go through but you know that's the way it is now that's the way, the way we need to look at it um, and, and until we you know start reaching the group stage on a regular level and um, you know that's, that's the way it's going to be. Although it's disappointment that it's the Europa <coughs> League can you take Wednesday night's game or Tuesday night's game as a, as a lesson going into the tie against the IK? Yeah again this tie is not easy and people think because it's Europa League you're going to get easy um, qualification ties to get into the group stage and Again, these guys are no mugs, um, but you know we'll, we'll face them when, when we come. We've got Dunfermline to look after tomorrow first. Do you think that the, the players that played during the week will be desperate to get back out and, and put things right on, on Saturday? Yeah, you'd like to think so. I know that would be my, my thinking towards it. Um, but you know, we've got a, a hard game Thursday to come, um, so you don't know what the manager's thinking is that. Um, we just need to wait and see to tomorrow what the team is. What's the manager been saying the last couple of days? Um, Again, he's, he's disappointed, disappointed for himself, disappointed for the club, disappointed for the players, um, as we all are for each other. You know, it's a, we win, win as a team and lose as a team. Um, but I think the you know the fans are the more, more hurt than what we are, um, and rightly so. Um, you know, they pay good money to come and watch and they expect us to get to the Champions League. Like I said to you before, it's it is very difficult to get there. But you know, the fans' expectation of us have, have grew over the last few seasons. In terms of this 
the cup game and do you look towards you know the celebrations at the end of last season and knowing what can be achieved if you get if you win these competitions as motivation for these early round ties against the likes of lower opposition like Dunfermline? Yeah. You know, Dunfermline will be looking to, to come and get a scalp and, and think, you know, we're, we're still licking our wounds a bit um, and, and come and try and either get a replay or, or try and cause a shock upset. Um, but it's about what we do and if we, we need to turn up with the right mentality, show the respect as we always do um, and, and go and play the way we play. What do you expect the mood of the support to be like tomorrow after Tuesday? <laughs> Good question. Um, I don't think they'll be, they'll be happy. Um, I'm expecting a sellout crowd, no. But... You know they're entitled to, to show their frustration, um, and it's up to us to, to go and put on performances again to try and put bums back on seats. There's been a huge amount of talk about uh, Kieran Tierney going and Callum McGregor playing at left back. But if you look at the Ayr Athens game last year, Kieran Tierney was playing, Callum McGregor scored. Does that just emphasise how difficult it is to get past this round? It is, and even you know even if it did get past you know, close, you know we've still got an, a very difficult tie and we would have had a difficult tie against Slavia Prague. Um, again, there's, there is no easy ties in Europe, regardless of, of who the opposition is. Um, but you know that's gone now, I and mean, we need to look forward. You know what Dunfermline and then you know a big one against the IIK. Is any team still a, a work in progress? Effectively? Yeah, I mean I think the manager still got ambitions to bring players in, and you know got a few weeks to go to the, the transfer window shut. So you know he'll be wanting to add, add new faces. Um, and it's about gelling together as quickly as we can and, and make sure that you know we're a real force going forward. You've been such a good goal-scoring form as a, as a team, as a squad. As well. Could you feel this year was, was one of the best prepared you've been for these rounds as well? Was that maybe the kind of shock as well for some of the fans and yourselves? No, I mean, you know, I don't think we could have went into the game any better prepared. I think, you know, scoring five goals away to Motherwell, seven at home in St Johnston. You know, we've got a crucial away goal over there, so you're thinking about everything was in our favour. Um, but I can say to you, night, football is a 90 minute game. You can't slack off for 45 minutes and then turn up for the second half. You get punished. You mentioned the fans have been really more hurt than the squad. How, as you've kind of grown as a sort of player and played for so long, do you get used to the fact that the demands are so great and how do you deal with them and from maybe some of the younger than your players? How do you, what do you say to them to, to, you know, to get the fans back on side? They will quickly know the demands of Celtic support. Um, I, I had to learn quickly, um, and if you know you can't handle the demands of being a being a Celtic player, then you'll not be here very long. Um, but I believe in every single one of the players through there that they've got the heart and desire to be a Celtic player and, and meet the demands that everyone expects. You said you had to learn quickly. Was it was it even a shock to you? you know, you're from Scotland, you know all about it. Nah, I mean I knew coming here, you know how big a club Celtic was, um, and when I joined, they were on a, I think it was that 19 game unbeaten run. I think there were 20 odd points cleared at the league, and you know I remember going away to Aberdeen and getting beat. Um, even though we were 27 points cleared, and the gaffer came through us like a ton of bricks. Um, and that's the that's the demand he sets. Um, and it's it's one that's it's filtered right the way through. You know, it's probably when he was a player, and um, he would have had demands on himself. That the manager would have had demands on him. And I think it just transpired all the way through. You came back in great form in scoring as well. You must be delighted that your, your skipper was saying that you, you should be coming back right into the Scotland mix as well. Is that something that you've aimed for because there's <coughs> some crucial Scotland qualifiers coming up? First and foremost, I just want to play here. I want to keep as fit as I can. And um, you know, I've still got a bit to go regarding my fitness. But you know, the longer I'm out on the training pitch, um, the more fitter I become. And ho you know, hopefully, I get a few more minutes under my belt. And then you know, when the squad gets announced, hopefully a minute. If not, you know, I'll work hard when over the international break and keep looking for my chance and, and wait again. I know you said you were willing to speak to Steve Clark. Has been any contact between yourself? And him? No, that's the third time I've been asked, and it's, he's, he's still <laughs> <laughs> he's still on the phone me. So if he's, if he's uh, if he does want to phone me, my phone's on. If he doesn't want to phone me, then fair enough. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, keep, keep battling on that. You know that he's not for me. He doesn't need to for me. You know he's got a, a squad of 25, 26 players to to pick from. Um, a good pool of strikers as well. So you know if I'm not in the squad, I, I won't be too disappointed. Lee, do you see the weekend as an opportunity for you to add a starting place in the eleven going forwards? Um, you never know. You never know what the gaffer's thinking. Um, you know as as a striker, you always want to play and score goals. But you know if you look at Odden's performance over. Um, the last few games he's been brilliant. You know, he came on against Motherwell, played the f full 90 minutes on um, during the week, so he was brilliant again. And and if I was him, I wouldn't want to be dropped. But you know, he at least needs to see that you know there is big important games, and we're going to need them. We're going to need everybody. But um, you know, we've not, we're no 
um, very well off on strikers just now. You know, we've only got three, so if one gets injured, we're down to two. Um, but you know, if I'm handed the, the, the number nine jersey to start the game, I'll be delighted. Lee, the manager's spoken uh, before about being open to playing in a striking partnership, something we've maybe not seen for a while. <coughs> Uh, do you feel like you'd be able to develop that way, Edward? Yeah, I said that. I think the big man has got qualities that you know I can I can play off, and he can play off me. Um, I think he likes to get the ball to feet and turn and go at defenders. Where I'm the opposite, I like to try and stretch the back line and and play on the shoulder of the last defender. Um, I think that would open up a, a big massive gap for for him to get on the ball and, and make things happen. Um, but you know, until the manager decides to to go with two up front, you know, we we've done it against Cal U in the, the Champions League and. You know, hopefully there's more opportunities to come.